Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is something a little bit different from me. I wanted to share with you my goals and just some plans for the year 2020. I'm not really one to make New Year's resolutions, but I do like having a few goals in place as it gives me something to work towards and the bigger picture is I want to improve myself as a person. I think at the end of the day, everyone just strives to be happy. And it seems so simple, but sometimes it isn't. Like, truth be told, you really do have to work hard to wake up and be a happy, positive person sometimes. Now, I myself have never suffered with depression or anxiety in a severe form, but I still feel like it takes work to wake up and be that happy, positive person. And for me, setting goals and just little routines in my life help me to be that happier, more positive person on a daily basis. So that's kind of where these goals are coming from. I want to be happy most of the time and really enjoy my life, enjoy my family, my friends, my work, my free time. So doing these little things for me really helps. So I hope that makes sense. Let's get into it and I'll share with you my goals. So I picked up this little notebook from Kmart and I saw on Instagram a girl I follow named Jessica had this idea of having a new goal every month. And they don't have to be massive goals. For me, every month I've made something that is achievable, so I'm not going to feel like I'm failing. So I've got one new goal for every single month. The first one for January is to write in a gratitude journal. Over the last year, especially doing my program with my acne, I learned how important it is to get things out of your head and onto paper and really just appreciating the little things in life. And so from the F Acne program, what I really enjoyed were the AM pages and what they consist of are writing down a few things you're grateful for. Next, you write down how you want to feel that day. So for me, I would constantly stick with happy and not stressed because I feel like I do stress quite easily, especially in my job. It can be quite stressful sometimes. So actually mentally noting that I don't want to feel stressed actually really helped because when I felt the stress building up, I was like, hold up. You don't want to feel like this, remember? Next, you write down your worried thoughts. And as I mentioned, I've never really suffered bad from anxiety, but this really helped with me feeling calm and feeling not stressed. So writing down anything you're worried about. It doesn't even have to be something major, just something minor that you might be worrying about. You write it down and then you write an action. So what are you going to do to deal with this problem or I don't know, sort it out. So for instance, if your worried thought is, I've got so much on my to-do list, how am I gonna get through it? I'm so stressed. All right, that's my worried thought. My action is I'm going to write a list. I'm going to do my top three priorities, what needs to be done first, and then the rest of the list can be done over this period of time. Or that's just a little example. But writing down my worried thoughts was actually a really big help for me. Something I didn't think was going to be, but it really made a difference. And then the last thing are my top three priorities for the day. So this could just be what's on your to-do list. It could be how you want to feel, who you want to see, anything, whatever your top three priorities are. So for the month of January, I really want to make sure I am doing this every single day. Last year, I was really good with it for a while. And then I just started to kind of fall off track. But whenever I was feeling stressed or worried, I would come straight back and write this out for a couple of days and it just made me feel so much better. So I feel like if I can make this a habit, it's going to hopefully continue for the rest of the year. My goal for the second month is to meditate before bed every night. Now this is something again I have dipped into and I've just fallen off track, but it really, really helped me. When I go to bed, I don't know, I'm pretty lucky. I lay my head down, take a few deep breaths and I'm clonked out. Like it doesn't take me much to fall asleep. But on the nights where I was struggling, meditation really, really helped. And it doesn't have to be like all hippie and I don't know. I feel like meditation can be taken the wrong way. But I have two apps that I use 
The first one is called Smiling Mind and the second one is Headspace. Now both of these do have a few free meditation, guided meditations, but then they also have an option where you pay for the app. I just use the free ones, in particular the sleeping ones. There's a few different options. I think on the Smiling Mind one, there are about six different meditations from like five minutes to 15 minutes. And literally I put it on, do it for like two minutes and I'm clonked out. Like, I don't know, it's just amazing. <laughs> And I feel like the techniques I've learned from meditating at nighttime do help me during my daily life. For instance, something so simple like taking a few deep breaths. Whenever I'm at work and I go for a walk to the toilet, I make sure to take a few really deep inhales on my walk. And it just really calms me down and again, de-stresses me. So I don't know, little things like that I find really help for me. My third monthly goal is to do 10 minutes of daily stretching. So when I wake up in the morning, I wanna do a little bit of a body stretch. Again, this is something I have dipped into, but for some reason I can't stick to all of these things at once. So I feel like spreading them out over the months and getting that routine, I will hopefully be able to blend them all into a daily routine. I stand up all day at work and I get really, really sore legs. It ends up giving me a little bit of back pain, but I find when I stretch, it helps so much. And I just feel really good. It's a nice way to start the morning. I just put on some relaxing music and do a little bit of stretching. Sometimes I follow a specific video. Other times I just do whatever feels good for my body, but it really helps. I really love it. And it's something I would love to get into again. My fourth goal is to go to bed and wake up at a certain time. I used to be really good at this, especially going to bed at a certain time, but now I just stay awake and I'm on my phone. Like I cannot put it down and I stay awake for an extra hour. And that really makes a difference to me the next day. I need at least eight hours plus of sleep to actually feel refreshed. I don't know how some people only sleep for like five or six hours. I'm literally a zombie. So I feel like I really let myself go when it comes to going to bed at a certain time. And then that affects me the next day with waking up at a certain time so that I have enough time to start my morning and get ready and not start my morning going, shit, I only got 10 minutes, quickly, quickly get ready. That's not a good way to start the day. So my goal is to be asleep by 9.15 and then I wake up at 5.15. My next goal for the month is to read a book. It seems so simple, but for me, I feel like it's hard to dedicate the time to reading a book. Last year, I actually read one and I really enjoyed it. So I really want to try that again. And it's another way that I found worked really well for me to de-stress. De-stressing has become really important for me and it's what I learned through the F Acne program for my skin. Stress actually plays a really big part in your skin and your breakouts for some people. And for me, it really, really does. So I really want to take the effort for five minutes a day to do something that just calms me down and de-stresses me so that the entire day I'm not so high strung. And so coming back to reading a book, even at work, I found just reading for 10 or 15 minutes on my lunch break really calmed me down. So that is going to be one of my goals for the month to read a new book. My next goal is to try one new recipe every week. So I like to write out a meal plan every single week with my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. I write a grocery list off of that so I'm not overspending. And that way I know I've got something planned. Like when I go to work that morning, I'm like, all right, that's what I'm having for dinner. I can get meat out of the freezer if I need. I know I've got the ingredients in the fridge. I know I'm eating my vegetables. <laughs> I just find it really helpful to meal plan. But I do get stuck in that rut of just repeating the same meals over and over, oh, this, this and that. And I do just cook off the top of my head. I don't really follow a lot of recipes. So for that month, I would like to try out a new recipe every week. Something that I've never cooked before, something new I can learn from and just have fun with. My next monthly goal is <laughs> Probably going to be a little bit of a hard one for me, and that is no extra spending for the month. So no unnecessary purchases. Necessities 
only. Now, I'm not that bad, really. I kind of followed the Barefoot Investor plan, if any of you have read that book, where he does 10% of your wage goes into a splurge account, and that is your spending for the week. And so that is what I try to stick to. Sometimes I spend a little more, sometimes I don't spend at all, but I would really like to not spend any of that splurge money for an entire month. We'll see how I go. I think it's a little bit hard because I know just being social, like does that count? Because I would usually take that out of my splurge account. So it's like, do I just have to be a hermit for a month and not do anything? I don't know. I think that one's going to be my biggest struggle. So if you've ever done a spending ban or something similar, leave me a comment down below and let me know some tips or tricks or how you went because that one is like, stresses me out the most. <laughs> my next goal for the month is something quite simple and it's just having a herbal tea every single day. I actually really love tea. I also love coffee. I have one or two in the morning, but I'm not dependent on it. So I'm thinking if I can swap out one of my coffees for a herbal tea or even in the afternoon, if I'm having an afternoon snack, I can have a herbal tea or maybe like at nighttime after dinner. I would just like to have and enjoy a herbal tea every day because they're good for you, they're relaxing, like why not? My next goal is to walk to work two times a week. So I don't live far from my job, I can definitely walk it, but I still choose to drive. So I think walking to work two times a week is pretty achievable. I definitely want to do this one maybe in like a cooler month though because in summer like it's just not gonna happen. But I think it'll be better for me to get out and do a little bit more exercise and just be in nature, enjoy the walk, listen to some music, listen to a podcast. I don't know, I just think it'll be good for me and that seems like something I can achieve. My next goal is also related to food and that is to eat a vegetarian meal four times a week. Now I am not a really big meat eater anyway, but because I cook for Clinton and myself every night, I always include some kind of meat protein sauce because Clinton loves it and I'm like, well, if I'm cooking it, I may as well eat it. I am quite picky though, like poor Clinton doesn't get a wide variety of meats because I don't eat that much. So it's just like chicken, steak or mince pretty much. But I have done vegetarian before. I actually stuck to it for a really long time and I really enjoyed it. And Clinton even enjoyed the meals as well. So I really want to try and incorporate more vegetarian meals into my dinners. I feel like breakfast and lunches is easy for me, but dinner is where I struggle with making them vegetarian. So that is my goal. My second last monthly goal is to explore two new places. So on the weekend, going out on some adventures and just seeing the sights, you know? So I've already got a little list together of some places that I would like to go visit. Clinton and I do go camping occasionally, so even just going out on the weekend and going camping, or there's a lot of places around here with nice little creeks or waterfalls. There's a lot of mountains to go climb, some that I haven't done yet. So just little things like that, getting out with Clinton or with my brothers and sisters or friends and just going out and having a good time exploring new places. And then my last monthly goal is to catch up with an old friend. So I feel like I've been very lucky to make some really good friendships over the last couple of years with people I've worked with and I just don't get to see them that often anymore. So I really want to make an effort to catch up with some old friends. So I feel really good about these monthly goals. I know a lot of them are quite small, but as I said, I feel like trying to do a lot of them at once was too much and I wasn't getting anything done. So if I can slowly introduce these habits into my routine, I think it's going to be better for me in the long run. I also just want to mention acknowledging what you've achieved in the last year. So it's all well and good to have these new goals, but I think, especially for me, it's nice to see what I did well the year before. So I did write down a few things and I just wanna share with you those things that I was proud of, of myself in 2019. So the first thing I'm proud of is my meal prep and my planning. So as I mentioned, I have my little meal planner and I don't stick to it 100%, but I do stick to it like, 80% and I'm pretty proud of that because I'm sticking to my plan. 
The parts I struggled with the most when it comes to meal planning were my lunches. So I come home from work and I'm bloody starving. So if I don't have a lunch prepared, I'll just head straight for something in a packet. And it's not nutritious, it's not giving my body what it needs, it makes me feel sluggish and therefore I'm unproductive for a couple of hours afterwards. So my improvement in that area is to make sure I've got lunches prepped and ready to go so I can just take it out of the fridge and eat it and not be tempted by bad foods that I bring into my house. The next thing I'm proud of myself is I joined back up to a gym. So I've never really been a gym person. I joined for a while and I went to a few classes, but I wasn't really enjoying the classes because of the teachers and blah, blah, blah. I did used to do reformer Pilates though, which is on like a cable machine. And that was the only form of exercise I have truly, truly enjoyed. But it was so expensive. So this new gym opened up and they have reformer Pilates classes. Yay! So I joined up to this gym. It is a little bit further away from me than I would prefer. But when I look at it, I don't mind having to drive a little bit further if I'm actually getting to do an exercise I enjoy and I want to go to. Like, I actually want to go to these classes. And I've never been a sporty, athletic person, never into exercise. And these classes, like, I want to go to them. So I am proud of myself for actually doing some exercise. <laughs> And especially as I'm getting older, I am seeing changes in my body and I'm like, okay, like if I don't start looking after myself, come on, Tanika, like you just need to take care of yourself. Exercise is more than just a physical thing as well. It can be a very mentally challenging or pleasing thing. So that is another way I want to look at exercise. I don't just want to look at it for the physical side of it, but for the mental side of it as well. The third thing I was proud of myself in 2019 are my relationships. So my relationships with my friends and my family, I feel like I've got really close connections with these people and it can be hard sometimes when everyone lives such busy lives, but I feel like I've made an effort along with them to spend time with the people that I love and create memories with them. And then the last thing I am really proud of myself from 2019 is learning more about my skin and seeing huge improvements in my acne. I have struggled with acne since I was 13 years old. I'm 28 now. So it has been a really long time and it's just something I got used to. I'm like, well, this is my face. And it can be a real confidence downer. I was trying to think of what the opposite word for booster is. <laughs> but doing the F Acne program, which is a program that was created by Nicola, who I follow on Instagram from The Unrefined. She worked with a bunch of health professionals to come up with this acne program and it taught me so much and has opened my eyes, as I mentioned before, to the more mental health and stress side that can be a part of your acne. Like, it's crazy, but it all connects. So I'm really proud of myself for diving into that program with 100% effort and doing what I needed to do to learn more about my body and what causes my acne. Because at the end of the day, I'm acne prone. There's nothing I can do about it. But what I learned are what the triggers are to my acne. And I do want to do a video that goes a bit more in depth about this topic so I can explain to you what has helped to clear my skin. But my triggers are stress. It can be food sometimes, like if I'm being an absolute total pig and also hormones. So that time of the month, it's just breakout city because that's what your body does. And you learn about that and your hormones and how it affects your body and blah, blah, blah. I could talk about it for so long. It was so freaking good, but I'm really proud of myself for doing that. And I feel like I'm seeing better results, not just in my skin, but in my mental health, my stress levels and just all around. So I'm really, really, really happy about that. And one last thing before I go, I just want to quickly mention this book I picked up called Create Calm. It's by Kate James. I actually picked it up from Kmart. I think it was about $20. And it just goes over things to essentially 
help you stay calm. So some of the contents include why don't we feel calm, what makes you stressed, get a good night's sleep, practice self-care, be more positive, savor the moment with mindfulness, you've got don't let fear become panic, make peace with regret, create order in your environment, audit your relationships, do a digital detox. I know there are so many great subjects in here and I'm really excited to read it and just, I don't know, I'm really interested in learning more about this and just, as I mentioned in the start of this video, improving myself. So I'm really excited to start reading this. If you have any other book recommendations that are along these lines, leave them down below and also leave me a comment with maybe some of your goals that you feel happy to share because I would love to know and even maybe take what I can from what you're trying to do as well. Some of your goals might actually make me go like, oh my god, I could probably do that too. And I hope that this video has had that same effect on you. Maybe you can take something from this video that you're going to implement in your life. Well, I know this was completely different from me. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below with your thoughts. I hope you all have a fantastic year and you just try and be the best person that you can be. I'm really going to try and do that. And if you want me to talk more about this subject, just let me know down below because as you can tell, I like to talk. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and subscribe. As I said, I am mostly beauty focused, but look, there might be something in there that you like. You can also come follow me over on Instagram. I will have my name on the screen for you now. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.